Weak Jujutsu sorcerers don't have a sense of self. This quote, this iconic quote, represents one of the many catalysts which sparked conversations around the themes of selfishness and ego within the world of Jujutsu sorcery. Today, I will try to contextualize this quote while exploring the concepts of ego and individualism. As important as this quote is though, the themes of ego and having a greater sense of self aren't as blatantly apparent as in Tomodachi game or blue lock. In fact, it's clear to see that Yuji and Megumi generally perform better in fights when helped by others. But this doesn't help their case when it comes to being one of the strongest Jujutsu sorcerers on an individual level, which establishes a situation where a strong group is usually being anchored by a strong individual. And this strong individual is usually driven by a strong sense of self. For the good guys, this individual is Gojo, and for the bad guys, it's Sukuna. These two individuals sit at the very top of the power spectrum for a reason. The idea of individualism and a sense of self is heavily embedded within these characters. So much so that they both share one of the most iconic concepts in Jujutsu Kaisen of being referred to as the honored one. This particular quote is taken directly from the Buddhist text called Lotus Sutra, where Buddha proclaimed his supreme status. And to further confirm the purpose of this quote, the creator of Jujutsu Kaisen himself stated that he used this quote to emphasize a message of arrogance. And if that wasn't enough to drive this message home, in season 1 episode 23, while training Megumi, Gojo picks up on how his lack of ego and sense of self is keeping him from realizing his full potential. He goes on to draw a comparison to their baseball match, calling out the fact that himself and Yuji would much rather go for a home run rather than bunting the ball like Megumi did. Gojo goes on to say that this type of behavior might be okay in baseball since it's a team sport, but Jujutsu sorcery is an individual sport. He encourages Megumi to be more selfish, and by following Gojo's advice, Megumi went beyond his limits and for the first time ever managed to activate his domain expansion and defeat a special grade cursed spirit. And once again in season 1 episode 5 this time, during Megumi's fight with Sukuna, Sukuna realizes the adaptability of Megumi's ability to create Shikigami from shadows instead of the generic technique which often uses charms. He fails to understand why someone with such amazing potential ran away during his fight with the finger bearer. In Sukuna's eyes, this was a waste of his talents. He believes Megumi could have broken past his limits by fighting the finger bearer himself. This is because Sukuna and Gojo have more in common than we think. They both believe in taking their challenges head on and coming up with ingenious methods to take their abilities to the next level. This way of thinking is further implied in season 2 during the hidden inventory arc when Gojo returns to fight Toji for the second time. While on the verge of death after fighting Toji, Gojo managed to unlock a new power which elevated him into a state of pure bliss, bolstering his arrogance and ego to such a high level that he believed he was a god in that moment. In this state of power high, Gojo apologizes to Amanai, stating that he isn't even doing this to avenge her death, but rather he's just purely excited about his newly found power, which further cements the idea of ego and selfishness in the pursuit of power. Throughout the entire of Jujutsu Kaisen, it's become very apparent that the strongest individuals get rewarded for having ego and the weaker individuals get seriously punished for lacking this kind of mindset. But then again, this is just one guy's opinion and I'd love to see what you guys think of this topic. And with that being said, be sure to warm and smash that like button, subscribe today to join the Spartan army and until next time guys, peace.